gay it's rapper. It's owned. The, the hip hop community is most likely owned by gay. To be honest but, with but you. But do you think they'll be? In they're owned the by gay. There, I happen to think there's a gay mafia in hip hop. And if anything happens to me after I bring up this subject, you know what it is. Rappers getting locked up mm -hmm. and rappers dying. Yeah, I think I've done songs with gay rappers. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure of that. Like, <laughs> 2011, you gotta hide that you're gay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, be real. Like, you seem to want to. The average artist walks into a record label who is a pimp and says, please pimp me, put me out. Over the past two decades, almost everyone has had his or her opinion on Bad Body founder Diddy, and veteran rapper Fat Joe is no exception. It should come as no surprise that rap veteran Fat Joe thinks the major label system is a Ponzi scheme and a tool for mistreating new artists. Over the course of hip-hop's 50-year history, rappers have often shared their grievances with record labels and the people who conduct the business of marketing, but not making music for the masses. Joe also thinks Bad Boy, headed by Diddy, should be called out for mishandling young male artists and subjecting them to sexual harassment. If your man says he's raps and he don't have a deal, there's a problem with that. Fat Joe has always been candid when talking about homosexuality in hip hop. Joe stays open-minded when it comes to homosexuality. He said back in 2011 that if people are gay, it shouldn't be a big deal. He even said that he's probably worked with gay rappers before going on to eloquently explain, I'm pretty sure the football niggas is gay. The basketball niggas is gay. Niggas is gay. There are millions of gay people in the world. Girls too. When asked specifically about hip hop, Fat Joe revealed his gay mafia theory. The hip hop community is most likely owned by gay, to be honest with you. They're owned by gay. I happen to think there's a gay mafia in hip hop, not rappers. You know, the editorial presidents of magazines, the PDs at radio stations, the people who give you awards at award shows. This is a fucking gay mafia, my man. Who do you think Joe was referring to, if not Diddy, Q-tip of a tribe called Quest, coined Industry Rule Hash 4080 way back in 1991? And since then, everyone from Chance the Rapper to Megan Thee Stallion has spoken out against the current system. Russ said record labels would become obsolete, while Meek Mill questioned their accounting practices, while Kanye West once attempted to make details of his deal public. Diddy, on the other hand, has been accused by tens of people he has managed, all saying he used them for all the wrong reasons. Recently, when Fat Joe appeared at the Wall Street Journal's The Future of Everything Festival on Thursday, May 4th, and used his platform to blast the recording industry as it's currently constituted, his arguments came from a long list of complaints filed by a continuum of artists in the hip-hop space. I don't believe in these people, he said, according to Hip Hop DX. For one, I feel like the major label system is a Ponzi scheme, and they do funny math. Whenever you try to see something in life, they say numbers don't lie. If you look at a chart and the numbers are so clear where you could say, the price of this is this, the price of this is this. And then when you look at a chart and they say 62.1%, 1.2, it's funny math. And so we never understood. We never recouped, you know, you had to be like the Fugees who sold 30 million records to make a dollar. To back up his claim, he recounted an instance in which even Jennifer Lopez, who he said is a megastar, complained to him that her records never recoup, which means to earn back the initial advance payment a label gives an artist to complete an album. Of course, there are many egos involved as well. Joe recalled being disturbed by having a poster of him at the Atlantic office replaced by one of T.I. after T.I.'s album outsold his, which shouldn't be surprising all things considered, but rappers, who often don't come from a business background, are always going buttheads with the folks whose jobs involve strategizing to ensure their music actually does well in the marketplace. Joe also did touch on how industry giants like Diddy lead young male artists into sexual slavery, though he didn't say it directly. If you remember, back in 2020, a former signee of Bad Boy came out gun blazing and accused Diddy of ruining people's lives. Yo, how did this nigga tell me he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts. Following the release of his Diddy diss track at the time, Mace is continuing to blast his former label boss on social media. In March 2020, the Harlem World rapper went on Instagram Live and expounded on why he chose to lyrically call out Diddy on the new song, Oracle 2, Standing on Bodies. When I see the hurt and the pains of other people on Bad Boy, 
that motivates me to say something so I don't be deemed as a person. When I see the hurt and the pain of other people on Bad Boy, that motivates me to say something. Mace told nearly 1,000 people watching the feed. So I don't be deemed as a person who just made a bunch of money and turned a blind eye. I'm not going to be like the rest of the people around Puff that don't tell him he's wrong. I'm not going to be like the yes men around him that see him ruining people's lives and never tell him he's wrong. More people on here will tell me I'm wrong but won't say anything to him. They'll judge my beliefs. They'll judge my Christianity and they'll say nothing to Puff. They'll say nothing about it's a concert for Biggie and Biggie's own daughter couldn't get in. They don't say nothing about that. But all of his friends got 50 and 60 tickets. We're done with your games. May seemingly came out of nowhere with shots aimed at Puff on the new song. He doesn't name Puff, but his bars are clearly directed toward the bad boy founder. Since Kane killed Abel, I'm able to kill Kane. Love, don't steal my nigga, change your name. May spits in the second verse, a reference to Diddy's name change in 2021. Yeah, I'm just a Harlem nigga repping down a Vegas strip with my own shoe you from Mount Vernon, nigga. Go and rep your own hood. Mace later spits, I'm not hating on your Billy Worth it right now. I'm only saying what you really work. You ain't no architect. You just a nigga who know how to market death. Go pay his mother what she really worth, nigga. And not only Fat Joe and Mace, who believes Diddy is a terrible talent manager and a terrible moral coach. Wendy Williams, the former radio and talk show host, has in the past exposed Diddy for the immoral handling of his male signees. Their beef will probably go down as one of the most prolific, though the two have since buried the hatchet. When Wendy started a rumor about Sean Diddy Combs being gay, he didn't take too kindly to it. And according to some stories, he was ready to retaliate with violence against her before they eventually buried the hatchet in their long simmering feud. So what did William say about Diddy leading to their beef? And how did they decide to let bygones be bygones? When Wendy was a radio personality in 1998, she suggested Diddy might be gay. Once news got to him, he supposedly pulled some strings to get her fired and thus began a feud that lasted more than 20 years. Things allegedly escalated to the point that Diddy sent a girl group on his label to confront Wendy, she claimed. Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my ass in front of the radio station, she revealed. I finish my shift, round up my headphones to see everyone lined up on the side of the window, looking down at the sidewalk, she recalled. When she got downstairs, she saw this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab to kick her ass. If the rumor mill is correct, that girl group was total, once signed to Bad Boy Records, and the music mogul was Diddy. For a long time, Wendy admitted to holding on to contempt for Diddy because she felt he tried to ruin her career. The hell he put me through, she wrote in her book, The Wendy Williams Experience, I will never forget, but I don't hate him. That's the same way Fat Joe feels Diddy ruins the careers of young rappers who go to him for help. Full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yes. conversation. Yeah, yeah. And in 2017, Diddy stopped by Wendy's show to publicly put to rest their two-decade feud. The interview was something she previously said she hoped would happen, though she didn't think it was possible. I know I've pissed a lot of people off, including you, she told Diddy as their interview started, but this is a full circle moment. He seemed to accept the olive branch and opened up to Wendy about a few personal things, including his love for his then-girlfriend, Cassie. I'm in love now, he gushed. Wendy aside, Jaguar Wright has also repeatedly ripped into Diddy for his sexual entanglements with male artists. Back in 2020, the singer posted a lengthy video on Instagram to address the executive, promising to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. She said she had hired an entertainment lawyer around 2003 who had just left Bad Boy, withholding the attorney's name for fear of retaliation. The lawyer confided in Jaguar and shared an unsettling story about her time at the label. Jaguar said that Diddy had a meeting with singer and New Jack City actor Christopher Williams about possibly signing a demo deal. The attorney needed to get approval for some paperwork and went to Diddy's office. The door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in, Jaguar said. When she walked in, she saw Christopher Williams performing fellatio on Puff. That was surely a surprising sight, but it didn't bother the lawyer so much as it embarrassed her. She played it cool until Diddy brought it up the next day. He was allegedly aggressive, asking her if she intended on telling anyone. When she politely asked him why he hadn't locked the door, he reportedly replied, I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do in my building. It's power, see? Diddy purportedly told the lawyer. 
If I could make a man suck my dick, I could make people do anything for money. To support Jaguar's assertions, the likes of Jamie Foxx and 50 Cent have also voiced their concerns regarding Diddy's treatment of young male rappers. Is it about time someone does something about it? I honestly think it is. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.